Hello and welcome back to another off-season episode of the Texas Private School Podcast. As always, I'm one half of your host and crew, West Hollis, and joining you from the heart of Dallas, Texas, Walker Lott, my fantastic co-host of four years now, is joining us from College Station, a place that I, with each passing day, wish that I was still a part of. Walker, number one, how are you? Number two, what have you felt about the current climate of, of private school football in the off-season? Man, it's been crazy, you know, just, you know, transfer news is the biggest thing nowadays. And we're hearing all of this, seeing all the offers go out to kids. It's been awesome. Um, it's been good times, man. Uh, you know, actually, basketball state championships are going on right now. I know that. Uh, shout out, I'll say. Midland Christian ended up with the championship for 5A. Uh, I know in 4A, I forget where, 4A was St. Thomas Episcopal. And I just pulled this up. That's why I know. And I will also give a great shout out to my uh, girls basketball team from SES winning the what 5A uh, state championship. So shout out to them. Congratulations. I think they've beaten like second Baptist like three years in a row. Like every time we play them, it's it's rough for sec- second Baptist. But shout out to them. Oh, don't don't do second Baptist like that. I remember when we were covering them back in the day. I think they also yeah. lost the second or beat second Baptist then. So. Anyways, shout out to the girls over there. Big bang things. Uh, Dude, that's a core for- memory. That was the first. That was the first event that we all went to yeah. together. I think me, you, and Ryan, because like, the basketball state championships were in College Station. That was right when Texas was starting to open back up. It's like the first sporting event after COVID that had fans. It was just wild. That was a fun time. That was really, really. And then we afterwards we did the whole pod episode together. That mm-hmm. I don't know if that same day or the next day. Yeah, it was the next day. Yeah, it was cool. The only live it's- episode we ever had. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, no, it's uh all that to say, quick detour down memory lane, just old men reminiscing about their their wild youth. But yeah, no, it's it's fun. We've got some some interesting stuff to talk about today. We're going to get into, you know, kind of the I guess the TAPS SBC transfer portal, which is a sentence I never thought I'd say in my life, but here we are. Again, not to say it's not a bad thing, it's not a great thing. It's just it's the way that it is. And honestly, I mean, we're here to talk about it. It's hey. it brings good and bad things like anything else does. And it's not just private school. You just saw North Shore get busted not that long ago about transfer portal stuff. So I, I it happens in I Texas, saw, baby. I, yeah. I saw some some snarky comments about that on Twitter that made me laugh. And it's just like that is that you bring up a good point. I'll talk about this more later, but uh, private schools do get a bad rap for you know stealing kids and stuff like this. News flash: every school steals kids. It's just the way that it is. But anyways, we'll we'll get into that. We're also going to get into a way too early top ten list, which again, based on the information we have, we decided to make it. Not to say these are how these teams are going to finish, but just kind of a sneak preview of what our thoughts are on squads going into the season. But Before we get into that, some housekeeping. Number one, a really, really cool thing that's going to be coming up, and I think as many coaches should get to as possible. Coach Washington from Brazos Christian is hosting a private school coaches clinic. I think this is something that's long overdue for the sport and is really, really beneficial. It's going to be an opportunity to network, fellowship, and talk football with like-minded private school coaches in Texas. All coaches are welcome. The structure of it, there's going to be a one-hour lecture with 20-minute breakout sessions on spiritual development, culture, offensive, and defensive schemes, by high school and college coaches. It's going to be at Waco Live Oak on either June 3rd or 4th, which is around TAPSCON, or July 15th and 16th. They're working out the dates for that. But there should be a link in our show notes that you can click on in the description if you're interested in it. Um, We also might be there. I would love to get down there. Just kind of give a little talk on our thoughts on where private school football is, just because, I don't know. Walker, you're like me. I I love – being able to be around like-minded people like that yeah. and get to talk about kind of the direction things are going. I've just talked a lot about this. What are your thoughts on this? I think it's fantastic. No, I think it's awesome, man. I think, you know, you know, I forget what they have. I think it's like Desca. I think that's what it is for public school. But yeah, I think it's an absolutely great thing that, you know, we should have and get people to talk ball and then also talk about how we can improve the game and stuff like that. And if we're there, We can share our thoughts if they want us to about like kind of where it is on the media side of things and also just get to know a lot of y'all because a lot of y'all we haven't been able to come out to games, but we want to shake your hand, come introduce ourselves and, you know, grow the community like we've wanted to since day one. So I think it's a great thing. 
Absolutely. No, I'll say forever. One of the best things that we did, which was Walker's idea a few years ago, is before we even started covering games, we took that little tour around the state and went basically did a bunch of podcasts and met a bunch of people with schools from around the state. And that's one of the single best things that we've ever done because it gave us connections to a lot of coaches and players around the state. This is kind of the same type thing. I, I've said it before. I've said it a million times it's a stronger together type of situation. Whenever you foster these connections within schools, it just makes everyone within private school stronger as a whole. I think it's a great opportunity. There will be more information coming in the coming weeks. So keep yeah. an eye out for that. But Coach Washington's private school coaches clinic, keep an eye out for it. I think it's going to be fantastic. Another thing, Lion College reached out and they wanted us to promote they are hosting a camp May the 31st in partnership with Fort Worth Christian. It's going to be May the 31st, 2024 at Fort Worth Christian, 5 to 8 uh, p.m. Cost $50 and all class of 25 to 28 athletes are welcome. If you want to register for that, you visit lionfootballcamps.com. Again, another great opportunity for kids that want to get out there, get exposure. I think it's a fantastic opportunity. Walker, your thoughts. Yeah, you know, when I was in high school, uh, sometimes I was kind of being real. Like, I was scared I wasn't ready to go compete against other people outside of just the game. And I think sometimes like this is, you know, camps that you just go go get some work in and get better, learn, and be able to be in that competitive environment. Because if you want to go play at the next level, being able to go to these camps and be competitive and know how to compete is a really good thing. And go, you never know. One, one college connection can help you down the line. And that's honestly really true where – if a coach really likes you one place, that can help you with your career of any other place you want to go to. So go go get some work in. Go. I mean, Coach Roby over there is kind of the helping over there at Fort Worth Christian. And, I mean, I trust him with my – if I was a player, I would trust him with my recruitment. So he knows what he's doing over there. Go enjoy Lion College. Appreciate Lion College for reaching out and wanting to promote uh, private school sports and having us come over there. So. Yeah, and I will say, I think can't, something that's so beneficial with camps, and it's different now because in today's kind of era of football, there's a lot more, you know, travel seven on seven and camp circuit type stuff, even than when we were in high school. So it might not apply. But a lot of the times in practice, when you're getting reps against your own teammates, you kind of get used, like if you're a receiver, you kind of know all the DBs on your team, their tendency. So it might be a little bit easier to react to what they're going to do. Whenever you're going to these camps and kind of getting reps against different people, you prepare yourself better for a variety of different looks. Long story short, I think it's something that's super beneficial. If you have the opportunity, get out to Fort Worth Christian, participate in this camp. I think it's going to be a great time and very, very beneficial. But that being said, Walker, unless there's anything else, that is what we have for the introduction. So now let's get right into the transfer news. And we'll start with the biggest thing that we've had since we last recorded. Um, some blockbuster news, something that we can now report on as it's official. Gavin Parkhurst and Jacob Maynard, the quarterback and the linebacker, and probably the two best players from the state champion Trinity Valley School, are moving to Fort Worth All Saints. Uh, Walker, this is huge. Uh, we know All Saints it's probably looking to reload after losing Keldon Ryan to DeSoto, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But this is big. We've said for a long time, Parkhurst is one of the more underrated college prospects in the entire state. That kid is a baller. Jacob May Nord as well. Just an absolute headhunter at linebacker. Dude, this is big. What are your kind of knee-jerk reactions to, to this huge move within private schools? Yeah, the first thing I really want to talk about is the two quarterbacks – leaving private school to go to DeSoto, you know, that we always talk about, Oh, private school can't do this. Private school can't do that. And I know Keldon's a little bit different because he only did one year in private school, but uh, the fact that DeSoto left uh, their Sam Houston state quarterback and DJ Bailey, they're like, all right, where do we go next? And they decided to go to the two of the best young guys in private school to come to replace them. I think speaks a lot to the just role of that private school has of talented athletes. I just want to say that, but Killed him. Thank you for a great year at All Saints. Best of luck to you at DeSoto. Um, and for Legend Man, it, it hurt hurts to see you go for seeing watching you grow. But uh, best of luck at DeSoto and whatever. Uh, if that's where you after, I guess if Legend leaves, if you get the starting job, whatever how that goes. But best of luck to you both. Going after that is okay. You have the most massive hole probably quarterback wise in the state now left open. Of all right, what do you do? And you know, Coach Beck is that dude. And he he found the best guy in Fort Worth in getting him to uh, Fort Worth All Saints and Gavin Parkers. Gavin Parkers is a guy that um, finally shout out Connor McQueen. 
offering him to go to an incarnate word. That's a huge offer for him to start that process. But he, I'm not saying he is, but he has the kind of the mold of like the Josh Allen type where he's a taller guy. He can throw the ball, but he is also really, really good at using his legs as well. And, and I, the dual threat athlete that he is, is a different than Keldon where Keldon's much more faster, but it is hard to take down Gavin Parkhurst in open field. And I think that's a big thing for them. And depending on who their running back is going to be uh, next year with um, what's the kid Reed Watkins leaving. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what that backfield looks like, but you know, you have him, you have Quamont Williams now, uh, Bryce Anderson. I don't know from, we'll talk about him later, but at, from SES, he transferred over there. So you have him maybe a receiver DB. You have a couple guys that he can throw to and let him just go to work. And you, you're talking about a guy that, like you said, Wes, pretty much offensively single-handedly brought TBS to a state title and you bring him to five a, which I mean, or division two, that's huge, big, big piece for him. And on the defensive side, I forget what his name is. Uh, the linebacker for all saints that now graduated and went to Arkansas state. You replace him. And uh, you know who I'm talking about. I just forget his yeah. name on the top of my head, but <clears throat> Uh, the number, the linebacker for uh, All Saints, who's going to graduate, going to Arkansas State, you need an inside linebacker to just c- contain it. They've always had a guy, Calvin Shumley, uh, Luke Brockermeyer back in the day. They've always had a guy in that middle of the field to just dominate. And there's not a better guy in tabs and it's in private school than Jacob Maynard. You bring him over there, and that solidifies the interior defense, which is. Desperately needed for any private school team. He's smart. We, we, we've we raved about him since we saw him as a sophomore. So, I mean, those two guys are game changers for all Saints. And it was kind of the thing with, you know, Liberty moving up. They were kind of the favorites to win uh, Taps Division Two this year, and they still are. I mean, this raises it by a thousand. I mean, this is undeniably one of the biggest moves. It's not bigger than whatever... Quinn Murphy going to Liberty because that's just insane. But it it's like if any other year, that's the biggest move by far. That is massive that you leave a culture that you've grown up in and you want to stay title in and you're kind of like, all right, what's the next step? And you want to go, go bigger and go better and you go to All Saints and you're going to dominate there. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about because the second that – we got a message probably, I don't know, three weeks ago that that this was probably going to happen. Like literally the, the the direct message came in within seven seconds. I'm not kidding you. Walker and I called each other and we were like, holy crap. And I think one of the first things that was brought up is why? What's the reasoning here? And it's obvious, you know, Walker being in Fort Worth, you brought up a good point that kind of the school for athletics, the premier school in Fort Worth in that area is all saints for sure. But we were basically just talking and we were saying TBS is far and away the favorite in three a to, uh, to go back and win it again this year. So we're like, why, why go in? If you had that in the bag, why move up? It's because it's that premier stage. It's not, not to say that, you know, taps is greater than SBC or five or taps D two is better, but all saints, like you mentioned, is kind of that premier atmosphere to go and do it. And I think, it's just another it's another layer of elevation for these guys to see if they can do it on an even bigger stage. And I say go ahead and try. I mean, it's it's it now makes all saints, especially with Liberty moving up and kind of leaving a power vacuum. I I mean, off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone that's even really close right now. We'll we'll get more information as the season if we as we get closer to the season, but this is gigantic. I'm a huge fan of Gavin Parker. So I don't think people even really understand how talented he is as a runner as well. He does. It's deceiving. He doesn't look like he's got blazing track speed, but that sucker is tough. I can't tell you how many plays I watched in like the two games that I watched him where he just single-handedly made plays on his feet, escaping pressure around the pocket or just putting his head down and running. That kid is fantastic. May Nord as well. All that to say it's huge. It's a, it's a division shaping move. And I cannot wait to see how those two guys compete in taps division two, but that's going to be really interesting on the point of Kelvin Ryan and legend, Howell going to DeSoto there's going to, and I, I was thinking about saying this, but there's going to be some pushback like, Oh, like how, how could those guys leave? Yada, yada, yada. If you have the opportunity and these coaches think you're good enough to go compete at the best program in the state right now, Anyone would take that deal. It's like that yeah. inglorious bastards meme. Like 
You I'll take, take that, that deal. Th- yeah, I take that deal. <laughs> like, I don't like, blame you. <laughs> damn good deal. But yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's the way I look at it. And I think anyone in those kids' shoes, keep in mind, two of the best. Well, I'm not underclassmen anymore for legend. That's crazy to say. As of 26, is going to be a junior. But yeah, two of the best quarterbacks in the state having an opportunity to go and compete at the biggest stage. Hats off to them. Wish them nothing but luck. Cannot oh, wait yeah. to see. Hopefully one of those guys take the reins next year and lead one of the best programs in the state as a private school alum. But that being said, let's move on to some other news. D.C., uh, surprise, surprise, is reloading as always. They're getting wide receiver Chance Abels and another receiver, Dylan Turner, both from Nauman Forest and Garland. I went and watched tape on both of these guys. Um, Long story short, they're good. They're really, really good. Chance Abels uh, has it listed. That he runs around a 4 4 40. He's 6'3, 175. He's long. He's lanky. He's got really good footwork for a guy that's 6'3, which you don't see a whole lot. He's going to be really impressive. Dylan Turner, to me, um, he's, he's Corey Taylor 2.0. He's going to fill those shoes very, very nicely. And basically, um, it just means that that DC is primed to go out and win Division Three again. I don't know who's going to come close to them. You got Carney throwing to him. You have so many athletes around the field. There will be more kids that come in before the season. Um, Walker, I have to ask, is uh, is, is Dallas Christian Trinity Christian Cedar Hill now? Don't make me say that. Um, I mean, I mean, not. I mean, let's let me let me let me preface this by saying not all the flair and the semantics of of Dion and all the stuff that people hated Cedar Hill for, but the ability to constantly reload with top talent. It's kind of a it's a deceiving question because there's a lot more of that around private school now than than there yeah. was back in the day. It's much more commonplace, but it. I mean, it's a it's a blueprint and it's working very well for them. I mean. Maybe I, I I hate it because we have friends over there at DC. But the fact is the the fact that you can replace Speedy Nettles, who grew up through your program at least from a sophomore to a senior, and you replace him with a TCU commit who's just insanely good. I, that's 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 insane. I don't even think you have that at Parish. To be honest, like you don't replace Andrew Paul with another guy going that big. It, that's just how DC does, and I mean, it's going to be interesting to see because you know, I mean, you have now now four star Luke Carney at the helm throwing against three four star Chance Abels. I mean, uh, pray for Division Three again for the whatever fifth sixth time in a year. I mean, it's it's going to be deadly, man. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people will will look at uh, at Carney's elevation to a four star that aren't familiar with private schools. Be like, oh, that doesn't make a whole ton of sense. He just kind of looks like a private school quarterback. I mean, you you have to watch the tape. Not only can he throw the ball so well, but he's such a great athlete. He's got a brother running track at Arkansas. You can tell the genes are there. That kid can run too. I mean, long story short, it's um, DC is going to be very good. Surprise to anyone that anyone that follows DC is going to be good. They're going to be the favorites and taps D three again. Yep. Uh, it's, it is what it is. Uh, th- we've known this for years. You've known this for decades. It, it's, it's DC. DC is going to DC, you know? Yeah, no, trust me. I'm, I'm more than familiar with it, but moving on, we have DJ Beasley and Bryce Anderson to North Crowley and Fort Worth All Saints Walker. This is obviously more your territory, but a bright side is Robert Jones is coming into Southwest Christian, a guy that we liked yep. a lot. We saw him live it really stood out to me in that 2022 playoff game against Nolan. Uh, what are your thoughts on the movements out and into SCS? Those are my guys. And, you know, being able to watch these guys for the past couple of years, I met DJ when he was an eighth grader and on the sideline of the, one of the SCS games and being like, he's going to be like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to be that guy. And he's turned out to be um, for both of them. I mean, it sucks, you know, like DJ was going to be probably our first division one talent, true division one, maybe power five talent from SES who grew up through there. Um, and you know, it sucks, but do I tell a kid who wants to go to North Crowley, which is the premier program in Fort Worth right now, not to go? Absolutely not. It's the same thing with DeSoto. If you can, if you believe that you can go there and play and dominate, I mean, there's no all power to you go and dominate, get recruited, play at the highest level this is a this we're talking about a team that made the semifinals in 6 ad1 last year like that's that's not a slouch that is a and all these college coaches go through that program it makes sense that he had to go there i understand go dominate 
All love to you. Wish you the best, man. Go get recruited. And hey, if you want to come back your senior year, come on by. But but for Bryce's sake, I mean, I, I get it too. You know, going there, you're going to replace kind of the Kevin Dodder type of role at DB's safety. And at 6'3", very lanky, he, he can be a guy who gets easily recruited when college coaches come by there. So for both moves, I understand the reasoning. Um, I, I wish them both the best. And, you know, come on by if you want to come back, DJ. But, um, yeah, best of luck to both of y'all. Go get recruited. Go get, Go play at the next level. For Robert Jones, I I mean, that's awesome. I love Robert Jones. We've talked about it forever. Since his sophomore year when we were watching it, we were like, oh, this is sick. This is going to be awesome. And having a combination of him and Bork, Tolder, the other 2026 running back, having the combination of them in backfield, SES relies on the run more than anyone probably in the state. Maybe than like Shiner. But when, it, when we're talking about a higher level, no one runs, runs the ball more truly than SES, I believe. And having them in the backfield – keeps the pressure off of Wyatt Aberhoff and the offensive line. So I think having them as a dual back system is going to be huge for SES. And I think it's a big, big piece for us. So I'm excited to see how they do next year. Absolutely. And moving on, we've got, um, we got an interesting quarterback battle taking place at Fort Worth Christian following Luke Dodd, 2024 graduating. We got Ty Johnson from Birdville coming in, Landon Gig- Gigladia, something like that. Yeah, sure. From Brock and then Timmy Wright from timber creek so walker we got three guys that are coming in battling um i i don't know if there's if there is one guy that's kind of leading that race what are your thoughts on those three guys coming into fwc i mean timmy wright might be the guy who's leading at the moment he spent this past year under you know luke dodd right, coming in from timber creek so he spent one year at fort worth christian playing receiver i believe so he you know he probably knows the system the best and you know all that but um I don't know anything about the other two guys. I know that the the guy rated Landon from Brock very high. I think number three in 2026 in private school. So he thinks the world of this guy. And I mean, if that's true and I'll watch the tape, but that's probably right. I mean, he 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 does no ball. So um then if he's probably the guy who's probably the most talented of the three, then we're gonna it's, it's gonna be interesting to see who pulls out there, but Man, it's it's good to always see a, a pretty good quarterback always at Fourth Christian. They've always had a guy or two that kind of lays the foundation of a good program there at Fourth Christian with Dodd. Uh, oh my goodness, Tyler Cannot back in the day, Trevor Andrews. They've always had a dude there at quarterback at Fourth Christian, and one of these guys is going to take the reins from Dodd to be that dude at Fourth Christian. But yeah, no, especially with Kate Crawford coming back the twenty six, who I am a huge fan of. That dude Tucker Ashford too. Yeah, exactly. No, fourth Christian's going to be they're they're going to be good this year. I think. I think you know they they took their their lumps a little bit, but I think they're a team that can really really play in D two. It'll be interesting. I think there's a lot of things going right in the North Richland Hills, and it'll be cool to see how that develops. But moving on, we got some we got some more stuff. We've got. I'll just kind of run through the list and give some general thoughts on all of them as a collective. We got Andrew Lockie to Parrish that kind of fills out their offensive line. Jesus Martinez to TCS Lubbock. Some Keller kids are coming into Liberty. Um, Marshall Tucker into Frisco Legacy. And Quincy Reams into First Baptist. I'll talk first about Quincy Reams to First Baptist. This is really, really interesting to me because I liked Quincy a lot when I saw him. Um, in the spring at Dunn, and then also at our quarterback camp. He's a great athlete. And if anyone knows how to develop quarterbacks, it is Jason LaVorn. Um, I think that's going to be really interesting. What's interesting to me is, is Quincy going to start at quarterback or is George Agonostas the really, really good, um, what linebacker. is he? Is he a 20, yeah, 27 yes. quarterback who played linebacker? That's what I'm really intrigued because George proved that he can play linebacker at a really high level as a freshman. So, Walker, I'm kind of curious on your thoughts because George is really good. Quincy's really good. How do you think that's going to play out? Maybe they can play Maybe they can play two quarterbacks <laughs> at once and then just directional snap it to everyone they feel like. I mean, that's what LaVorne said in the whatever the <laughs> state game or no, in the interview. Shout out Waverly West for that interview. He literally says on the thing where he's like, yeah, like I, I mean, we could do that. It's in a, it's in our playbook, and I went, "What do you mean by that? Like, you can't do that. That's not allowed." But like, that's I mean, Lavorne is a wizard, and that offense is going to be deadly. And you know, whoever is at quarterback, they're going to have the easiest time of their life throwing to Dominic Sudu Robinson, Caleb Mitchell, and the twenty seven, who I'm also excited about, but that was hurt in the state game last year. Last yeah, last year. Um, 
is that I mean they're gonna have the time of their life thrown to those guys at D four. I really am excited about Quincy Reams though because Quincy is a guy that we really liked when we was at when we were at the quarterback retreat last summer. We were like, okay, this kid's got the size. He has a good arm. Like he can be something in Division two. And you know Bishop Dunn just wasn't great this year. And I think this move for him, for his recruitment, is going to be awesome. Um, and I, I'm really excited to see Quincy under LaVorne and see if he can be the guy. And if you can – I'm not saying George can't play quarterback because he absolutely can. But if you can keep him also just on that side of the field at linebacker, whew, man, that's going to be that's going to be a deadly team this year. Absolutely. I remember whenever I was watching First Baptist versus Lubbock Christian when that game got out of hand, they put, they put George in. And George made – I'm still so mad about it. Because the I don't think the tweet, the video of the tweet ever went through. He mm. threw an absolute I, I don't know whether to call it a bomb or a dime because it was both bime dom. I don't know, but he just absolutely sailed this ball to I forget who it was. I want to say it was no, I think it was it was Dominic Sadu Robinson, who you know makes it easy to throw to, but the throw wasn't easy at all. All that to say, um, they've got a really good problem to have at uh First Baptist picking between two really good quarterbacks. It's going to be a fun time to see how that develops out. Uh, Marshall Tucker to Frisco Legacy is also really big. A very, very talented defensive lineman at Prestonwood goes to Frisco Legacy, a team that is quietly building up a really, really good roster, even losing guys like uh, like Wes Norris, like... Um, yeah, you replace Wes with him? Woo! Woo! Yeah, that that's going to that's gonna turn out... Really, really well. What are your thoughts on how how that's going to work out? How Marshall Tucker is going to shape out at Legacy? When you look at it, you're like, okay, that's a Division One lineman. He has everything you. When you look at an off defensive lineman, six three ish, edge rusher, like he he looks like it. He has to play. He has to play like it. And I don't know how. I haven't watched the film from past year, and I don't know if he does. But I really love this Frisco move. Having Sam Jones behind him, and they have a talented young guys coming up. I really think this Frisco team can be something special. Frisco is gonna be a team that we're really excited about next year, uh, which is crazy after a couple of years of them, and they've kind of resurged. And shout out Doug Hicks, coach of the year for a reason. Um, I do want to mention one last thing on those guys. Jesus Martinez is a guy that we've heard somewhat about uh, through some sources being like, hey, this kid at TCS Lubbock is going to be pretty dang good. You need to watch out for him. So that's going to be an underrated guy that, you know, in D3 might, might cause some chaos a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just – it's it, it's cool to be able to talk about this. Like I know, like I've said before, people have mixed opinions on on transfers and all that. But it, it's really interesting to sit here on the off season and see kind of draw a map where kids are going, how this is going to impact various teams. It's cool. It brings another dimension to the sport. It makes it feel kind of like college and the pros and like free agency in a sense. It's just it brings it brings another aspect to it that I enjoy talking about. But yeah, yeah. I mean, seeing how all these guys shake out at these new teams, especially going back to. Fresco legacy. I think if you see what they did last year with all the exact same kids with Doug Hicks and Jake Mackey and all of them really developing them, having some new guys come in. I mean, I think, I, I think they are, they're poised to do really well in that district and it'll be, it'll be interesting. All the districts have gotten shaken up. We'll, we'll detail that in our preview, but I think they're poised to do very well. Yeah. I've, I, I was thinking about it in my head of doing like, you know, a coaching carousel, like map of like where everyone goes doing that for private school of like where everyone ends up everywhere. I think it would be cool, but yeah, I, I think, I think Frisco is going to be an underrated team and Hey, Regis always has to deal with the South, but having them in district right No, No, they're not. They're in SES's district now. So um, yay. <laughs> I guess that's yeah, exactly. how I should say it. So hey, that uh, whatever all saints Frisco game next year is going to be pretty fun. Absolutely. No, it certainly will. But all that being said, that's kind of the news that we have in the transfer portal. We will come back and maybe do another episode if a bunch of new news breaks. But that's kind of our transfer recap for where we are at this point in early March. Happy uh, March Madness to all who celebrate it is officially upon us. All right. And before we get to our way too early top 10 rankings, we're going to take a second and do something that we haven't done in a couple of years. We used to do this, but we're going to go through the Texas private school football guys rankings. He does a fantastic job. The best of anyone that I've seen in the state of going through and ranking players. I really can't imagine how long this takes and how much effort goes into it, but it's truly a fantastic feat, but we're going to do the, the easy work and kind of look at the list, give our kind of bullet point thoughts on who's there and where they are. And basically in the top 10, top 15 yep. and give some commentary on it. We're going to start with class of 2025 quarterbacks and looking at this, the first takeaway is how much dadgum talent there is Ooh. not even 
counting 26s. These are kids that are going to be seniors coming up. We got Sawyer Anderson at number one. Uh, Keldon Wright at number two, who has since transferred to DeSoto. Luke Carney, number three. Gavin Parker's number five. And then Charlie Peters, or Gavin Parker's four. And then Charlie Peters, number five. So, Walker, we've got the list in front of us. We have the top 15. Anything stick out to you just on impact looking at the list? I mean, you're talking about, and then if you add, if you think about it, man, Roy Thomas Jenkins to this list. So, you have Sawyer, Carney, Parker's uh, of guys we really cover, and then Roy Thomas. That's a, that's a, solid four at the top and I, I don't know if it competes with the other years but i mean that's pretty dang good that's those are all four, four guys that are division one offered and i mean i think Sawyer definitely is the number one guy but i mean carney is also that dude now and i think those two are going to be awesome to watch this year parker is another guy we've already we've talked all about and i think roy thomas fits into that upper la- echelon of 2025 quarterbacks it's going to be fun to watch Wilker horn is a guy that we love and you know losing him at lubbock christian was a huge loss for them Tanner and I just want to talk about a couple other guys and I'm I'm glad they make the list and like how good this class is. Tanner Huckfeld is a guy, he's a dude, man. It's a big piece of that Concordia team. Garrett Tyser is a guy I'm really excited to watch this year. Jake Jerky, David Campo Bianco is a guy. Every uh, he had a rough kind of state championship game, but every time I watch him, he he's impressive. And uh Carter Devereau backs and buys. When you get down to like the, the second page, and you still have guys like Landon Martinez and Evan Garrett, who's the new Permian transfer for Midland. They, you have some dudes, man. It's going to be fun to watch this team grow and all these guys, man. It's, it's going to be really, really fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. A guy that I'll ride for is Ian Pulte. I think Ian Pulte is at least a top 10 quarterback in 25. And granted, it's easy for me to say he, sit here and say that when I didn't watch all the film and make the list. But I mean, wh- just when I went through and watched that kid um, two weeks consecutively at Legacy, I mean, he's very, very talented. His ability to throw on the run is what I took away from watching him. He's very, very good. And I, the thing is, I didn't know about him until I went and I watched him. That kid is really good. Gibby Alvarado almost cracking the top 10 is a huge W, in my opinion. We're yep. no no secret. We love Gibby. Gibby is a fantastic quarterback. You just – people get so hung up on, on size, I think. And if you look past that, you'll realize that kid is a fantastic quarterback. And, you know, like you said, looking at the top four – Parkhurst absolutely a, it should be a top five. Um, Carney's going to move into that second spot with Keldon Ryan leaving. I think, I mean, I, I think Sawyer Anderson and Luke Carney are 1A, 1B. I mean, Sawyer obviously is one people have known about it because he's been a freshman, um, just kind of the, the heir apparent after after Preston Stone left. Carney is, Carney could step in to a place like Paris and also do very well. I, I think I think the list is incredibly well constructed. Also, Tanner Huckfelt from Concordia is absolutely deserving of being on that list. Long story short, absolutely chock full of talent in the 2025 class. But that is not the only list we are going to go over. We're now going to move into let's do the running backs. Yeah, let's do the running backs. So you want me to start it out? Top- yeah, go ahead. So uh, the guy ranked Chase Garnett number one. And when you have a guy like John Kelly, number two, and every you look at the offer list and you're like, oh my gosh, how do you not rank John Kelly number one? You haven't seen J- Chase Garnett play. <laughs> that's basically let, how let, it is. Let me ask you real quick. Do you do you agree with this? Do you think that's do. a good one too? So do I. I do. I do. I think Chase Garnett, and you can see the offers he comes in daily nowadays of what he's getting in, and it's absolutely deserved. Chase Garnett is a different gear to him when he accelerates when he it's it's insane when he plays and John Kelly I think is absolutely good the first game I saw him was like right after injury so I haven't seen prime John Kelly but like I still think he's absolutely great too and I think both of them are really really solid backs and the fact that the thing about it is right those two would are, are great backs and would be in the top 10 of any in the state and then you have Cole Allen Brandon Thomas Caden Collins Dean Calhoun and you're getting down to like the bottom. You have Bryce Butler and Mark Rayson. And you could even talk about Takashi Campworth, who everyone at Fort Bend is really excited about next year. You even go to the next page, right? You have Robert Jones, Mikey Moreno. Like these are dudes, man. And I'm really excited to watch these guys play next year. We have some dudes at the running back spot in, t- in private school this year. Absolutely. I would go as far to say that Chase Garnett's the best back that I've seen since Andrew Paul in private yeah. school. 
hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a broken record. The combination of speed and power he brings, I know it's a cliche thing to say when describing running backs, but Chase Garnett is the epitome of that. He's not a guy that relies solely on speed or power. He has this combination of both that I haven't seen since Andrew Paul, a guy that went to Georgia. I think Chase Garnett is absolutely a guy that could go to that level and be very, very, very good. And Cole Allen, uh whew. Cole that- Allen's a unicorn. He's a unicorn. <laughs> it's the only it's the only way I can describe him. That dude, whether it's running the ball, every time that you go and watch a St. John's game, you're going to see a Sports Center top ten play from Cole yep. Allen. That 100%. dude is the most di- he's the most dynamic playmaker on the list. Oh yeah, bar none. I mean, he's he's just absolutely phenomenal. Then Brandon Thomas is almost in that same vein as Cole Allen. He's a guy that can break off these gigantic With- runs. Without Brandon Thomas, they don't make state. I don't think this year. Uh. Bel Air because the, he carried them in those Kincaid games and those St. John's games at times where I think they scored like the game before the state championship. I think he scored five times in one game. That's the player that Brandon Thomas is. And he could, he's in the running for MVP and SPC next year. He's going to be insane. Yeah. Another crazy thing is Mark Rayson being a top 15 running back in the state. I think he's a better linebacker than he's a running back. That dude, that dude's a freak. He is a heat seeking missile yep. on the defensive side of the ball. And the fact that he can also run the ball so well, which you have to at a school like first Baptist, that's D four. It's just, it, it's great to see these kids realize they don't have to be stuck on one side of the ball to be elite. It's it, to be able to be that good on both sides of the ball is fantastic. And I'll end with saying Ben Nagee shoot number eight is, is absolutely deserving of being in the top 10. He is such a good player. All I'd, heard when I went to TVS was stories about how much time he spent in the weight room in the offseason to get himself in shape to play. I mean, it just shows when he plays. He is so dadgum strong. Having the pairing of him and Parkhurst in the backfield, I'm sure that he will get a bigger role now with Parkhurst moving up to All Saints. Uh, Just absolute absolute bowling ball of a running back, and I'm excited to see how he performs in the coming year. But I think now, Walker, we move on to 25 defensive line. Yep. Starting with Max Granville at number one, Henry Estes at number two, Jack Harwell at number three, Max Suppley at number four, and then Trevon Edmond at number five. So, yep, uh, I'm going to start off by saying is I think Jack Harwell could be at, at least number two on this yep. list. I am a broken record. I'm a huge Jack Harwell fan. Henry Estes is fantastic. I just think Jack Harwell, I haven't seen somebody – as big as he is, and he's he's a house. He's a gigantic dude. Yeah, move as explosively and quick as he yep. does. He's fantastic. That's a guy that you don't need to look at the stats. Just watch film. Ooh, when you watch film of him, it's insane. And that's another guy I need to go by. Henry, Henry, we will be by St. Mark's this spring because we need to see you in person because you are an absolute mountain of a man. I want to see you play ball. Um, Max Granville. What do we have to say? We don't need to say anything. <laughs> he knows he lo- we love him, and he's uh, – he, go to a and please. Um, for the I, other I, guy I – will, I will say I have to bring back the Max Granville story every once in a while just because I have to, I have to give my I know ball moment. But I oh, remember, absolutely. I remember going to the Fort Bend playoff game against St. Michael's his freshman year in 2021 and just watching the game – and just watching this kid, this this small kid at linebacker make play after play after play. And I went up to him after the game to get a headshot. I'm like, you're a freshman? He's like, yeah, because he's still, you know, a soft-spoken yeah. freshman. And I was like, that kid's going to be really good. I didn't know he would turn out to be Max Granville good. But, right. uh, again, just a little I know ball moment. But Max, just Max has been, been so elite for hey, so long. Billy, if we don't. I think we should break his commitment, in my opinion. <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. You don't have to. You have all the 247 because he's big time now. But, hey, guys who started it should finish it. Uh, I would love to break his commitment live on TXPS Media. But um, going to the other guys, Max Suppley's a dude. If you watch the tape, he's also really, really fun to watch. Dalton Knapp as well. Blake, the, the combination of Knapp and Robinette next year is going to be awesome to watch. Uh, more edge versus more like kind of a strong side DN. I think that's the correct term of like, he just is a house on one side of Robinette and guys like, I mean, you know, Andrew Michaels and we're, we're in the world is, I guess they, he put him at linebacker, but uh, Maddox Sakiri, I would put him more defensive line than he is linebacker, but 
He's also a dude. Uh, Marshall Tucker, we've talked all about. Joseph Trickett as a guy that looks the part, but I never saw him play at Houston Christian. But um, also, number 17, Michael Fowler is a guy, if you watch the film, holy cow, it's 6'3". He's going to be fun to watch. We put him all private school third team this past year because he had a great year. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see him this year. A couple other guys, I'll mention just their names. Tyler Suscars, he's a dude. Landry Sattler in the middle of that Paris defensive line is a dog. And guys like Trey Slangen is going to be a guy for that St. Thomas uh, defensive line. It's going to be really, really good. But, uh, yeah. Well, Walker, if you go to number 19, uh, Samuel Val- Valenzuela, I, is yes. that, I'm guessing that's your picture. Uh, That might be. I don't know. I really. I was don't about to say. Know. I'm trying to think. Maybe, maybe you know. I was going to say that if it is, I think that's the best looking picture out of anyone on the list. But I wanted. I wanted to give <laughs> you props if that. If Thank that you. Was yours. Thank but you. But that being said, a ton of talent in on the defensive line, obviously in the class of 25 in private schools. Let's flip back to the offensive side of the ball for class of 25 wide receivers. I just realized I was on the wrong list. So let me scoot up a little bit. Okay, yep. number one, Quentin Brown. The top two. The top. The crazy thing is two. Would out you of the top? Yeah, who would you okay, – the, the top five, Quinn Brown, Brady, Janus, Caleb Mitchell, Jalen Hawkins, Bryson Fields. First of all, three of the five are Liberty guys. Just want to make that known. Secondly, Wes Tolleson, who do you have as your number one guy in 25? Coming, coming from a coming from an X receiver, as you can you can see behind me in that yeah. glorious picture. Um, man, that's tough. It is yep. – Um. I'm I'm gonna say Brady Janusek. Uh, mm. Brady just maybe I I understand why Quentin's there because yeah. Quentin's track time, speed baby. is something you can't teach. Again, it's not football speed; it's track speed, and you see that he's running he's running sub eleven. He's running like I wanted to say he ran like a ten eight something. That might be it. Might be even faster than that. I think it is even faster than that. Just absolutely 10-5. speed that we haven't seen in a long time. The reason why I say Brady is. Brady has, he has it. And if you've played football and if you've watched football, you know what it is. And you know, I can't describe to you what it is. It's just, it's this innate ability to make plays, to find the football and just to fly out, not get tackled. Not to say that Quentin Brown doesn't have it because he absolutely does. Brady though, has it on a level that maybe two or three guys I've seen in four years covering it has. I, I think Brady is the best, is the best receiver on this list and rounding it first of all max granville coming in as a top seven receiver dude it's so true right though after, right after he mentioned him it, it, he is right after we mentioned him as the number one the defensive lineman in the class but he is the crazy thing is he's such a good athlete yeah. you just give him the ball and he makes plays i, I but, remember i remember watching the twca game and they took they had him on a screen and he caught a screen and he took it 60 yards to the house that's just who he is he's a pure athlete um and they did the same. How thing many years. defensive linemen in the state can you throw? Can you throw no a tunnel or a bubble screen to? And they house it. It's it's it's, it's you know you always have those things that like seven on seven things where like the, oh I'm a defensive lineman but I'm receiver at heart. No 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 no. Max Granville is that dude and he can play both. I also want to give a shout out to Cole Allen, running back and receiver list. I mean he's that dude and he he's so versatile. He's a Swiss Army knife. But the fact is that like you could talk to you can go to twenty and you could talk about division like dudes right tyler curry division one offered ty bradley division one offered uh jordan manuel i think has a division one offer q does too at number 10 claudio torres is a guy we've heard heard about for years at brownsville st joseph who's an absolute dog tj smith is fast garen sampson was a great receiver last year there's guys all the way down to 20 that are absolute dudes for the in the wide receiver group this might be one of the deepest years at receiver we've had in the past couple years where even Carson Darby and Bryson Fields are dudes at the parish. I, I keep saying dudes, but like there's so many of them, man, this year. It, it's really the, one of the only words you can use to describe them. I will say before we get off of receivers, I have to talk about Jalen Hawkins because I feel like he yeah. has a tendency to get overshadowed because of how good guys like Quentin Brown and Brady Janusek are. That kid is is just as good he's he's incredibly fast i think he's running on their relays and just absolutely killing it but he has that track speed he has that ability in the open space to just make plays and score he absolutely seeing him top five on this list i think is beautiful because i think there might be a tendency making these lists to be like oh like I don't I don't think I can because we do the same thing. Oh, I don't know if we can put that many Liberty guys top five. I I salute the I salute the guy for being like, no, he is 
he, yes. Liberty has three guys in the top four. I'm going to do it that way, which is very much true, which is, you know, why they blew everyone out this season. But yep. that yeah. being said, yeah, Cole though, Weller were thrown to him, man. Yeah, I just, it's, it's, it's not even fair, honestly. But that being said, now let's move on to 25 offensive Lime. line Walker's oh, yeah. house. We got, well, you know, all you, you take the top five away. Yeah. Um, this is a year of like, I think this is the deepest. It's been in a very long time. Um, the fact that Diego Dela Cruz, I love him and Bothwell. Like it was a fight to the death in my mind of like, who do you put for offensive lineman of the year? Um, both of them were one A, one B, and both are big, massive offensive linemen who can move extremely well. Um, I Joshua Moses is committed to AM for a reason. He's big bodied, he moves well at camps, he's the camp guy that everyone loves. And I, I get why AM he just offered him and he committed. That's gonna be interesting. I just don't know much about him. I haven't watched him play, but Diego is a guy that if I could make it down to Brownsville, St. Joseph, and watch this dude play, I absolutely would. Those two, him and Bothwell, are absolute dogs. Anthony Pellerin, I've said it since his sophomore year, he is the best center prospect in TXPS and one of the best center prospects in the state. He's an absolute dude. RJ Lee is a guy that, I mean, at number six, we're talking about a guy that has, is Division One offered at number six in private school. And six eight now maybe six nine supposedly he's a mountain of a man and he has been dominated and he's so athletic for his size as well a couple other guys i'll mention uh victor concaba from austin brentwood is a guy i watched tape about for this uh offensive lineman of the year in d4 he's a dude man he moves really really well jake glisson is another uh st thomas guy that is impressive Hudson Dalton is a guy from Alito, I believe, that transferred Fort Worth All Saints this past year. is going to be awesome. Keith and Smith is a guy that, at his size, shouldn't move the way he does, but he does, and he's insane. Owen Belson is another ESD guy I'm really excited about. Alex Lasada, which is funny. That is my photo for Alex Lasada. Uh, <laughs> uh, it sucks because when you do the portrait mode, it blacked out part of his eye, and I feel bad for that. But um, really good player. Uh I'm excited to see him more this year. TJ Walker, even when you have Nathan Humphrey from Liberty all the way down to 27, man, that's that, that's when you know this class is deep. Um, Tucker Goodall at 32. Wild Childress at, from St. John's is 36. Dang, man, this is a good team. And our, you know, our D4 offensive, offensive lineman of the year, 44, Ben Tillery. That's Jose Lerma, too, at 41. This is a – oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm going down the list. And I'm just, like, seeing how many dudes we have in here, man. There's there's some dudes, man. That is, offensive line is deep this year. Absolutely. And I got to give a shout-out to 51, Luke Wilson, and 42, Colton <laughs> Masters from Grace Community. Not Tyler Grace, Grace Community. But – um. Oh yeah, Luke Wilson. We got to get Luke Wilson's number up. Fifty one is 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 crazy. That dude's got to be that good dude's got to be top top thirty at least. But that I, being said, that is that is the offensive line. Let we me... did miss one, and I have to talk about it. Is linebackers in twenty five? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a little bit down. I don't know if we had like we talk about a lot of deep. I don't know if linebacker has ever been this deep ever in TXPS. The fact that you have what is that? You could talk about eight guys, not maybe, I don't know, nine that can go division one this year. Truly CJ Grayson and Jacob are two, three elite linebacker prospects we've ever had in, in private school. CJ track times galore. Sideline to sideline is a menace. Grayson Boker is athletically one of the like insane linebackers I've ever seen. There's a reason Baylor offered him when he went on his camp. He's a dude at six, three, I mean, he's he's a I I don't know what else to say. He is a dude. And Jacob Manor, we've talked about him all day. Uh, insane athlete. And Maddox Sakiri, I guess he will play linebacker more, but we had a more defensive line last year. But he he definitely makes the top of that list. Bryce Butler changing for because he's grown so much from running back to linebacker and doing it with 122 tackles this year. Insane year, man. Dominic Van is a six two linebacker from Grace Prep who. Doesn't get enough shine as some of these other guys, but he's an athletic freak. I love him. Sam Williams as well. John Carr and Cooper Davis at St. Thomas are going to take the reins from Tyler Day and dominate this year. And there's even guys like, I like Lawson Watkins, Jack Burkle, Jake Shaddix won our linebacker of the year this year. There's dudes at linebacker this year. I'm very excited. Shout out my boy Colton Cook from SES at 34. Should be higher. <laughs> 
No, absolutely. Yeah, you pretty much said it all. I've I've just I've got to give a shout out to whoever took that picture of CJ Witten because I don't know how you get that shot and that yeah. ball of light, but that is just that is a beautiful shot. Also, Maddox Sakiri. Um, I'm talking a lot about Liberty. It might be because I've got the <laughs> state champion shirt on. I also I feel a bit of imposter syndrome when I wear this shirt around because number one, it's incredibly comfortable. So I usually just throw it on to go work out or something, but I also feel like it's kind of like a stolen valor type situation because I think yeah, someone's gonna come up to me eventually and be like, "Oh, I didn't like your state champion." It's like, no, I just covered them like five times that year, and they decided to give me a shirt. But long story short, Maddox Sakiri is is an absolute dog. Playing him, him and the boogeyman Max Saul were an absolute force this year. And yeah, I mean, you said it. These these linebackers in twenty five might be the deepest class, maybe outside receiver because receiver is just absolutely ridiculous. But yep, let us move up to dbs let's go to dbs yeah let's go to dbs so we got joseph smith from legacy, legacy school of sports sciences at number one brady janisek makes his second consecutive number two ranking number three is ethan dishman from second baptist number four is david madison who i love from prestonwood number five is blake stovall jr from fort worth all saints so who I believe well, is also transferred to DeSoto, by the way. Oh, okay. well, well, there we go. So then we, we'll move Nick Blevins from Liberty, who's also a dog, into that spot. And also, Mark Rayson. Yeah, I guess Rayson does play more of a DB role. I said he was a linebacker. He kind of plays He kind of plays that hybrid role. You can really put him anywhere on the defensive side of the ball, and he's a mess. Yeah. But, Walker, a, a ton of – another just ton of absolutely elite – uh, prospects i haven't seen now granted we don't legacy school of sports sciences doesn't really fall into our domain of coverage so i'm gonna go out and say that i think janusek is is number one just because of like i mentioned the the ever looming it factor dude just goes and makes play there there is no one on this list that comes close to making the plays that brady janusek does yeah um he he has the it factor he has the intangibles he has the athleticism and he has like the knowledge and football iq to where to be um you have him at safety and nick blevins at corner is and he i saw something uh my old boss jason howell shout out to him love him went by liberty the other day and said he might move to linebacker because he's so big now which i mean at the next level i totally see why but the fact that you can lock down one side of the field, which he did this year, and then move to linebacker because you're that athletic, whew, um, he is that dude. Um, but I, the guy that I really want to talk about is Ethan Dishman, and he's a guy that kind of stood out to me um, when I watched him against um, who uh, St. John's this past year on a Thursday. But they, the, the same, that whole game was rough. It was like fourteen to nothing final. It was a rough game. But he's a guy that uh, when he went to the next level D1 camp uh, down in Houston, showed out and was their DB MVP. And that's with like division one guys around Houston. He showed out that much. And I think that's a guy that, you know, is an under on under the radar guy from second Baptist deserves more love. And I wanted to shout him out there. Guys like DC crane, who've been there forever. Guy Stern was our DB of the year. Nick Wheeler is a dude that definitely shows out on film. And a guy, D2, uh, DB of the year, Utah Anderson with 100 tackles from the safety spot is another great, great player. And a guy who's going to probably replace uh, Braylon Thompson is that dude in the DB spot. Christian Houston is a guy that really stood out to me as well. You know something I just figured out from this list? What? First Baptist has another done transfer coming in. Who? Bradley Mays. Oh, really? Who I was a huge fan of when I watched. I think Quincy brought. I think Quincy brought him to the camp. He's he's six one one sixty, just a great long lanky target. Yeah, he's ranked number forty nine on the DB spot. The guy has him listed from Dallas First Baptist. So if that's true and they're coming over, that is another huge pickup yeah. for First Baptist. That's going to make them far and away the favorites in D four, as if they weren't already. But that's. That's also really, really big. Yeah. In ter- I'm trying to think if I was going to say anything else regarding this. Oh, yeah, David Madison. David Madison is a 61170, plays corner for Preston Wood. That he's got a Michigan State offer. That is a division one cornerback. Yep. That dude, just from an intangible standpoint, he's so long, he's so lanky, he just flat out makes plays. You can man, he's a guy, he's so valuable to have because you can man him up on pretty much anyone's best receiver and not yeah. really have to worry about it that much. I mean, he he's a fantastic player. DC Crane at number nine is also a fantastic athlete. Tyler Curry, both sides of the ball, just an elite playmaker. Yeah, DB's also very, very stacked this year. Let me move up. I think the last thing that we're going to uh, – let's do 2026 quarterbacks and then uh, 26 we, we, linebackers. You want to do linebackers? Yeah. 
Okay, cool. Let, let's start with with 26 quarterbacks. We got Quinn Murphy of Argyle Liberty at number one. Keyson Henderson of uh that's what Legacy that? School Sports Legacy Sciences. School Sports Sciences at number two. Landon Gigliota from from uh, Fort Worth Christian at number yep. three. Cannon Toon from Second Baptist at number four. And Isaiah Gatlin from Cornerstone at number five. So Walker, another stacked class, obviously headlined by the recent transfer, Quinn Murphy. Your thoughts on what we're looking at at junior quarterbacks? Quinn Murphy is the best 2026 quarterback in the state. Period. I think private and public, I think he's the best quarterback in the state. I, I don't know who competes. Keyshawn Henderson is a guy that I don't know who they're recruiting him at the next level, more of an athlete like receiver or quarterback. I don't really know. But, I mean, I've been told that he is a phenomenal athlete every time I've been – like everyone talks about him, so I may, that makes sense. I don't know Gigliota, but it makes sense that he's up there if the guy ranks him. Cannon Tune is a guy that 6'4", Came into the season not thinking it was going to start and then had to start. And I think a season and an offseason under belt, I think it's going to be really, really good. Um, Braden Jillings is a guy who watched the film. He is impressive at uh, Brentwood Christian. Uh, Gavin Sistenrose that from Brownsville St. Joseph is in another long line of guys who are just throw for 5,000 yards a season down there in Brownsville. And you're like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> and then he's just another guy, which I believe, I mean, they have the last name. So I'm going to guess. He's the younger brother of Luke Cisneros, who won our Offensive Player of the Year a couple years ago. I'm going to guess that. <laughs> and then our our ultimate you-know-ball moment of the year is Santiago Fernandez from uh, John Cooper. Yeah, I really like Santiago at that size, and he's athletic as well. He's going to be a good player. Jack Malone is a guy that, I mean, I really think he can come into his own this year. Just this year for for for. I don't know. This year for Fort Bend was just rough all around. And I think him another year under his belt is going to be really good. Luke Glass, another tall quarterback from Prestonwood Christian. I mean, what more do you want? 6'5". And then a guy who I'm really excited about, Shea Quinn, um, is he going to be the uh, successor to uh, Stephen Gill at uh, St. John's? I've seen him throw. He's impressive in person. I think that's going to be a guy. I believe he's the son of one of the coaches there. I think the OC. And I think, you know, is going to be a big, big player for them at St. John's. And a couple other guys, uh, Levi Gola, underclassman of the year for us. Austin Cosby uh, over there at uh, Grapevine and Faith is a guy that we've been seeing more and more about. Um, well, who else? Who else? Uh, Cooper Smith, he's, he's a solid player over there at uh, – Central Texas Christian, and I want to. I think I'm going to call it there. And for 2026 quarterbacks, that's all I really know. <laughs> yeah, no. Then let's move on to 2026 linebackers. Number one, Mad Morgan from Episcopal. Number two, Sam Jones from Legacy. Number three, Colton Roden from John Cooper. Four, Deacon Hiley from Trinity Christian Lubbock, and number five, Chris Houston from Trinity Valley. So, Walker, another another list of guys, maybe that some people might be less familiar with, being that they are only rising juniors. Your thoughts on the list? Yeah, I, I mean, Madden Morgan is a, I mean, is a physical specimen. There's a reason he's number one. Uh, I think he has all the tools and intangibles to be that dude in this class. Sam Jones is a guy that, the more you watch film and the more you hear about him, you're like, oh, this kid's gonna be good for years to come. Um, I don't know much about these other guys. I'm not going to lie to you. Jesse Richardson is our underclassman of the year. Um, came in from somewhere in Keller and dominated this year when Parker Meese left and you kind of replaced that role and just did it perfectly. Um, William Terry is a guy I have to shout out from Northern Catholic, my hometown. Same with Chris Houston, who's the younger brother of William Houston uh, from Trinity Valley, I'm going to guess. Uh, is an athletic freak as well. Both those guys are going to be awesome for the A17. Um, Jed Hare was an underrated cat. We kept watching year this year and just made plays. And the fact that he's number 11 is insane. Uh, same with Kate. The, the funny, the funny thing for me yeah. was with Jet because for a while, like I, I hadn't seen, I, you know, I knew to watch for Cooper Witten, but I'd forgotten his number a few times and I kept watching. And I was like, is Cooper Witten number seven? I, and I watched and I was like, well, number seven is really good. That might be Cooper. Yeah. And I realized, oh, no, that's Jet Hare. And then I was like, oh, Jet Hare is a sophomore. But yeah, yeah. that dude, that dude, may, he plays so, so much above his age. He's going to be really good for the next couple of years for Liberty. And the last guy I'll mention from this list is AJ Morale. 
And he's a guy that his name kept popping up when we looked at all district lists and made like first or second team all district in D1 as a sophomore. Um, and I, I I don't think he had any film on his on his huddle and when we were looking at him for underclassmen, but that's a guy that we might have to watch out for this upcoming season. But that's really it. That's all I really know about these guys. Absolutely. I will say we were scrolling through the guys, um, we're scrolling through the guys' media post to find these and i saw that he posted a, a a screenshot of el paso by marty robbins and i don't know the context because i can't see the post but i, I will give a hat tip to that because that's one of the greatest songs of all time but that being said let us uh let, let's move on to our final item on the agenda our official txps way too early top 10 keep in mind this is way too early we're not by any means saying this is how things are going to turn out it's just kind of our general musings about where we are at this point and who we think is going to come in leading the pack into the season so without further ado our way too early top 10 starts off with number one liberty christian out of argyle number two parish episcopal number three fort worth all saints number four prestonwood christian number five dallas christian out of mesquite number six houston st thomas number seven austin regents number eight Houston Second Baptist. Number nine is Frisco Legacy Christian. And number 10 is Bel Air Episcopal. Walker, I will say first off that probably the most surprising thing on this list for a lot of people is going to be putting Legacy Christian at number nine. I think there's a lot of recency bias in the past couple of years about how just quite frankly awful Legacy was for about a two, three year stretch, but had a great season last year, came out one district retaining a lot of good playmakers and adding guys like Marshall Tucker in, I think, I mean, I, I think they're a top 10 team. I think our rankings reflect that. Yeah. I mean, you have to also remember, this is a way too early top 10. <laughs> we could have a team bring in 10 transfers that are all D one players and then boom, they go up the list. But this is kind of from last year, kind of what you expect from some of these teams. Um, you know, Bel Air, you could talk about them being 10th and being what, like second or third for us last season. Um, you lose so many good players, a UCLA quarterback, like that's hard to replace. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how they replace these guys. Um, Press, what do you have to replace Tasby? DC, you have to replace Speedy, which they kind of already did. St. Thomas, you have to replace Dante and Johan and Tyler and all these guys. A lot of these teams have to replace. The kind, the thing about it is, though, kind of what we thought. The guys at the top don't have to replace as much, if that makes more sense. Where Liberty, Parish, All Saints don't have to replace as much leaving. That's huge for them. Um, and teams like Second Baptist and Regents, I'm re I'm really excited for Regents. You have to remember, they're up in that new district. But even with Jack Devine, who we think is going to be a dude for them this year, they have a team that went to the state championship last year, and they only graduated like five, I think, five or six. Yeah. So you you replace all of them with guys who are supposedly really young and are going to be really good for them. Austin Regis is going to be a team that's going to have to be able to, we're going to have to watch out for this season. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that kind of rounds it out really well. There's not a ton of extrapolation to be done with the list. It's kind of our thoughts. It's kind of our thoughts of where they are. We'll probably make a graphic out of this and have all of y'all yell at us for how wrong it's going to be. I will say first team out on this list is Dallas First Baptist really really wanted to find a way to put them in there just maybe maybe if i knew bradley mays was there because we made this i figured out live bradley mays was transferring in um might have snuck in a spot there but i mean first baptist is is just knocking on the door to get in but long story short that is our way too early top 10 yet again don't take it with a grain of salt we're still what like six months away from the season starting just it's thing to get people talking and whenever one of you chirps me uh, on Twitter or Instagram for putting this list out, I'm going to direct you back to this clip of me explaining it's just a preliminary list to get people talking. But that being said, Walker, that is uh, that is actually all that we have. I have a Duke game to catch in 10 minutes, but I think yep. we're going to make it out before then. Uh, just we, any any closing thoughts, closing comments you want to leave the people with? Um, People who won the award for the award show, it might take a little bit longer than you think. So, uh probably be by for spring ball with those awards for the but awards yeah. yeah for the actual awards um stay tuned for some stuff we're doing this summer if we can pull it off who baby it's gonna be some fun time so stay for, tuned for those announcements uh but yeah go check out coach washington's thing link in the description down below subscribe we're almost to a thousand followers subscribe please do that that would be pretty sick um but yeah that's pretty much it for me i'm tired man I have, a good, I have to go study for a finance exam. 
Yeah, no, all, all of my finals were all my finals were last week. So I'm kind of riding a high. I will be disappearing into the New Mexican wilderness for a week to go chase some chase some rainbow trout and some brown trout. And hopefully maybe, maybe I'll just get lost there and stay there for the next month and you won't see me until football season. But Sorry. that's only in a perfect world. All that being said, uh, thank you as always. We the only reason we continue to do this is number one, because we enjoy it immensely. Number two, because of all the feedback that we get from y'all. Seeing everyone repost the award show and knowing everyone cares that much is why we continue to do it. We're so incredibly grateful for everyone's constant support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all that being said, as always, I have been one half of your hosting crew. Walker Lott has fantastically been himself. We will see you in the next episode. See you later.